Well, we're back here in the studio and uh, we're going to talk about colour and how to work with colour and also how to use tone with colour. So how to work colour from dark to light. So here's where you should be up to. You've got um, your charcoal drawing here and then we did, we added some white paint to it and water and then you then were asked to add impasto medium, maybe mix it with a bit of sand, maybe not, you know, here it is without, without sand on it. Uh, we also use some tissue paper on this one over here. So this little one over here, we've got some tissue paper uh, put on in places. I'll just pan out a little bit so you can see the effect of that. Some of the corrugated cardboard. I use the corrugated cardboard on the smaller ones. Have a look at this. This is, a, this is an older previous painting. I wonder if you can recognize a color theme in here after doing the color exercises in the last tutorial. I wonder if you can recognize a color theme in this painting. Well, let's jump in and have a look. Remember these? You should have all done one of these. So we've got orange through to blue, green through to red, and purple through to yellow. They're opposite on the color wheel. Okay, blue and orange, green and red, purple and yellow, uh, opposite on the color wheel. Can you guess? You don't need to guess. It's red green. I'm pretty much working with red green. Now you'll go, hey, but you got you got blue down there. Well, yeah, of course I got blue down there because what's the recipe for green? Blue and yellow. So I've got yellow here and I've got blue down here. Here's all my greens. So if I think about, I'm working with, in that paint, in this painting here, I'll get back on it so you can see it. There's a lot of color in the background on this paint, behind it, there's a lot of things that distract from this painting, but that's kind of a, a landscape, I guess. It's landscape inspired. It's also inspired by the artist Mark Rothko, who I'm really into. And we might just look at a bit of Rothko now to explain further this theory of colour, which is not a new theory. It's not made up by me. It's long established. Okay, this is Mark Rothko. He's a uh, American abstract expressionist painter from the abstract expressionist movement in the 1940s and 1950s in, in America. He's known as a colour field painter. The other famous abstract expressionist painter from this era was Jackson Pollock who painted with all the splashes. But what you get with Rothko is you get these large, glowing, shimmering squares of colour. And you'll notice that he works often in this complementary colour scheme we're talking about. So the orange and the blue, uh, there was a green one, oh red and green. You see there's red and green here, the red's at the top and the green's underneath at the bottom. Another red and green. Um, I am so enamored with Rothko's painting. I just think he's one of the greats. That's just, that's just, he's one of my favorite artists. Um, find a favorite artist, you know? They're like your favorite musicians. Now these paintings are large. There's Rothko in front of them. They're really, really big. And that when you get in front of a Rothko, these edges of these squares never stay still they somehow in he was just so good at working the edges of these squares they somehow have a glow to them and a shimmer and they almost vibrate so um, he's our artist for this tutorial we're looking at look at this where someone's tiled a whole lot of Rothko's together look at that color going on there so Rothko Mark Rothko 1950s American abstract expressionist color field painter We'll finish on that one. Isn't that just gorgeous? So if you think about green and its recipe, I'm working with anything from blue through to yellow. I have that permission, I guess. And I'm going to work against its complementary opposite, which is red. So pretty much I'm working with green and red. Okay. However, I'm going to interpret green as anything encompassing yellow and blue. 
the same thing if I was working with orange. I'm going to permit sort of anything from yellow through to red to count as orange, and then I'm going to bounce it against the blue. Same with the purple and the yellow. So there's, there's the red through to green. And there's a lot of green. A lot of greens. We haven't got the best light in here. Check out the texture. It's just... I burn the surfaces of these too. So some of these areas, they've been, they're actually been physically burnt. But that's a whole other story. But there's a lot of um, bits of natural elements in this painting. It's quite, I'll just get up on the texture. It's quite thick. Hmm. Anyway, let's go and look at another one. Let's go look at another one. Okay. Look at this one. So this one here, can you guess? It's pretty much working blue orange. So if we get up close on it, it's actually quite blue. It's a bit hard to see how blue it is, but it's actually quite blue. And remember, the recipe for orange is yellow and red. So anything through yellow red permits me to call that orange. So these marks here are quite yellow. But it does get quite warm and ready orange through here. It's a bit hard to see because of the lighting on the camera. I haven't really used a great deal of sand with the impasto medium. It's pretty much the impasto medium and the white paint. And just allowing lots and lots of dark color to glow through. That's the other thing we're going to do in this tutorial is how to bring the dark from underneath, allow the dark to glow through from underneath. I'll show you one more, last one. This is my purple yellow. Let's just get back. Ah, purple, yeah, purple yellow. So if we get up on it, there's like a purple wash of transparent purple paint over it. We call that a glaze. Can you see here? I'll just let the camera focus. There's sort of a purple glaze. So we're going to use that term now, from now on. I'm not going to call it a wash, because a wash is, is watered down paint. We're actually going to mix a gel medium with the paint here to do this, and it sort of maintains paint consistency and viscosity, and yet it's transparent, and it's called a glaze. And it's a way of staining a whole surface with a, with a hue. Remember we talked about the word hue last time in the last tutorial? Hue means colour. So while this is kind of very brown and black and thick and tar-like, it's all got a purple hue to it. Now I'm under warm lighting at night, so it's, it's a bit hard to see a lot of the subtle colour variations in this. It's a bit like in music, you restrict yourself to a key. I'm gonna play in E minor. I'm gonna play in G sharp. Well, we're gonna play in the key of purple yellow, or we're gonna play in the key of red green, or we're gonna play in the key of orange blue. We're going to say that we're gonna start dark and finish light. The dark goes down first, always. And then we pick up the highlights with the light over the top. So this dark blue was probably one of the last things that went on this painting. And you can see the light underneath. The glowing through that light is always dark. So we need to start dark first and bring it up to the light. Colour is amazing, I think. Colour is just 
the most spectacular thing. And when you, when you, once you've got a knowledge of how color operates in terms of those complementary color schemes and how color vibrates against each other, and I do, it does vibrate against each other. You can't tell me that that's not vibrating and resonating. And it's not rich, because it is, it's beautiful and rich. I think I'm gonna go red, green, like this painting. But you choose one, okay? Now if you're working with one, you might choose orange, blue, or red, green, or purple, yellow. If you're working with two canvases, then you have a luxury of um, choosing one color scheme for one of them and a different one for the other. There's always a warm and a cool, okay? So red, green, red's warm, green's cool. Yellow, purple, yellow's warm, purple's cool. Orange, blue, pretty obvious. Orange is warm, blue is cool. Okay, enough of color for the moment. Let's talk tone. I've pre-prepared this bit of corrugated cardboard because uh, it's an instant, it's an instant bit of texture, and uh, it's going to allow me to emphasise my point about tone. I'm going to pick up some yellow. And I'm just going to knock the edge off that, off that white. All right. Now, if I get most of the paint back off this brush, and I just, I just work across this, you'll notice. When I start to work across it, some things are starting to happen. Sure. I've just painted pale colour over dark colour on a bit of corrugated cardboard. But can you see this red glowing through? You can really see it here. All of a sudden, that red is underneath and we've laid a lighter tone on top. This is why we work dark to light. It takes on a whole other dimension because it's, it's almost like glowing embers coming up through the painting. Now you can see the red. You can see the red there and there. And even this blue glowing away quite strongly underneath the light. So I think we're ready. We're going to work dark to light, okay? You've got to have a th you've got to be thinking ahead, thinking of the future, thinking of how it's going to look like once you've laid the light color over the top. I've changed my mind. I know I said red green, but I'm actually going to go blue orange. So here are my two blues. I've got my warm blue and my cool blue. And then here's all my ingredients for orange. I've got a deep yellow warm red, cool red, and I've introduced a yellow ochre. So that's going to be my other yellow. I've got to control them. I've got to not let the yellow touch the blue because it'll go green. I've got to say, right, orange and blue. And they're not going to, we're not going to venture into green and red or, or purple and yellow. That, the discipline of this is going to be staying orangey blue. Okay, that's the discipline of it. Okay, so we're in the world of thick brushes. We're in the world of house brushes and thicker paint brushes. I am gonna work with these thinner ones, but a lot of the work I'm gonna do is here with these brushes here. And you can get these, uh, we've got a bunch of them at the school, but I'm sure quite a few of you have got these floating around at home. Um, they're basically house painting brushes, but they're the small ones for doing architraves around doors and things. Four dollars from Bunnings will get you one of these, and I reckon these are just the perfect size brush for this kind of thing. Orange is a warm colour, and blue is a cool colour. So I'm going to start to bring in. I'm, I've got to get a sense of warm and cool. I've got to control orange and blue together to get that sense of what's warm and what's cool. And water is my friend. So I might just, with, I'm going to mix my two blues together 
and I'm just going to lay blue in there. Doesn't matter if it runs. And I'm just going to start to stain sections of the canvas with it. Now, it's picking up the black of the charcoal, and that's fine. I'm happy with that. Now what I'm doing is I've decided there's going to be a blue zone through the middle and I'm going to do orange top and bottom. Now they're not going to hit each other like that, they're going to blend into each other. Here I am so far, here's my palette, I'm going to get some blue and I might grab a bit of the cool red and I'm going to allow that to venture into the blue. Oopsie daisy, so there it is there. I'm getting a bit purple there. Now I know I said I wasn't going to do that, but they're my little rules, it's my painting. And they're my little rules I'm going to break. Don't be afraid to just let it run. Good fun. All right, I might just get into some painting and uh, I'll come back to you. Control, I haven't just gone mental with it. I brought some red in. I just felt blue, the too much blue was just getting out of control. Now, it will run. So, one solution is to work flat, okay? But one really important thing, oh, take a photo of your painting before you do this. Okay, so you can remember where all the line work was. Now a lot of it is staying there for me because the black charcoal, but um, remember your zones, remember your shapes. Okay, so here I've worked, I've worked that, I've kept that shape there, and I've kept that shape there, um, and I've, I am going to go with this kind of mountain thing. So. I've kept my lines and I've kept my shapes. So I've sort of worked between them. So what I'm going to do, I'll demonstrate a little bit. Remember, we're trying to get paint into underneath. We don't want any white spots, really. We've got to bury them. But work watery. But what I'm trying to, what I'm going to do is work up around the charcoal. If you work in a way as if you're colouring in the shapes. If you're colouring in these shapes, then you'll maintain them. So I've just stained that a bit. I'll just get some colour. I'll get this, I'll get this blue. And I'm gonna add a touch of red to it. Now I need to I need to make sure that I don't lose this shape that I've drawn in in charcoal. I'm going to work it in. I'm just going to scrub away. Keep changing direction. Remember with the white paint, don't don't work in the same way all the way. Now at this point, I really like the way that blue above it is glowing. So I'm going to do it again. So I get a bit of paint on my brush like that. I'm quite generous with it. It's got that sort of sticky bit poking out of it. And I'm going to kind of just drag it. It's actually ultramarine blue, it's not purple. It's just showing up purple on the camera. But just kind of be, be a bit Ah, uh, what's the word? Loose and random with your brush. Okay. Now I'm going to go for a red center on this because I'm going to work with this warm red, which is pretty much orange anyway. And I'm going to go for quite a bold red area, red shape here. Right there. 
work it in. Now I don't want to use too much water on this one because I don't want it running everywhere. And we'll see the result in a sec. And I'll just let it go purple as it blends across. Nice. Oh, really nice. Oh, so good. That's just getting... Woohoo! I'm a bit excited. <laughs> um, that's really nice. That's so good. Okay. I'm going to get into my oranges. <laughs> what am I saying, yellow? Now, I am going to allow some white in on this orange. In my warm... So in your warm tone, in your, in your cool tone, whether it's purple, green, or blue, okay, don't use white yet. But in your warm tone, get into some white. Let it happen. Very nice. I'm happy already. Make sure that you get the paint right in to all those textures. We're not yet painting, we're not yet painting on top. That's coming, but we've got to get these, get to get these uh these colours in underneath. Okay. Now I'm gonna to start to pick up the textures here because the paint is getting quite sticky that I laid down before. Look at these colours coming through. Oh my goodness. Now what I'm discovering, I'm trying to hold the camera while I paint. What I'm discovering is that I'm actually bouncing orange, blue, purple, yellow. Now I've got the confidence to go ahead with that and let that happen. I am going to let it happen. So there'll be two complementary colour schemes battling each other in this painting. Orange, blue and purple, yellow. I'm not quite sure yet which one's going to dominate. Take note of what I just said. I'm not sure yet which one's going to dominate. I'm going to let it evolve. Remember these browns and greys? Remember these? Well, here they are. They're really nice. It's so good to paint with. Well, it's a bit too pale. So, then I'm going to start to redraw some of my charcoal lines. Oops, I keep drifting away. It's really hard to paint with an iPad. I'm working with an iPad in my hand. But uh, it's, it's okay to pick up some of these charcoal lines and redraw them with the brush. Push the paint. Rather, don't, rather than drag the brush, push it. Okay? push it forward and you get that kind of a mark okay so I might just start to reclaim whoops where am I I'm just going to start to reclaim some of this charcoal drawing starting to come together quite colorful which is fun I don't know how that green got in there I do the yellow and the blue got together and made a green baby <laughs> so we're pretty much going it is actually quite orange blue but on the camera the blue looks almost purple anyway I'm a bit naughty I'm getting into some white I said I wasn't going to yet but I just I'm ready to so I am notice I'm leaving these little bits of darkness here it's so important. Look up the top. I've worked some white into that as well. And I've worked some white in down here. I'm going to leave this red shape here and this red through the bottom and this orange shape here. I've brought out that bit of blue. I went over it with some white on the brush. And as I did it, I was just very careful to leave that bit of blue. Let's get up close to it. There's a little bright iridescent lump of blue in the middle. So I'm using, I'm holding the brush like this, okay? And I'll just pick up some paint. So I'm literally, I'm picking up the paint 
on the metal part of the brush. I'm pretty hard on brushes with this sort of painting, but that's okay, that's what they're for. And uh, I'm just gonna sort of scrape it through like that. Like that. And I'm just gonna kind of push it. Just like that. Don't ever do fan starry shapes, right? And don't ever dab, 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 dab. Don't ever. Drag the brush, push the brush, smear the paint around. But don't let it all turn to mud. You'll notice this, all the colors have stayed pretty bright. Do you know what? I might stop there. That's pretty good. I might just get the last of my pale paint here. And I might just, I hope I can hold this. I'm just gonna, I need some pale bits through the center here. Perfect. Done. That's a nice little painting session. That is a very satisfying painting session. I'm well happy with that. All right. Let's just stare at that for a bit. I'm very happy with that. And this is it when it's dry. So when it's dry, it flattens and goes quite matte. So all the glossiness is gone. And some people find that disappointing, but I don't think so. It's nice and um, I think the flatness allows the color to glow a bit more and stand in its own right. When paintings are really glossy, which is, you know, a whole thing in itself, when paintings are really glossy, you can be seduced by that beautiful glossy surface, I guess. But um, when they're matte like this, which is one of the qualities of acrylic paint, you go with it. You go with you go with the matteness of acrylic paint and the flatness of it, and uh, it, it it lets the color stand on its own. But there it is, dry, without all the sort of distracting shine and glossiness of the water on it. I think it's quite, um, I think we're gonna, year 11, I think we're gonna have a really uh, beautiful set of paintings out of everybody. And I'm really looking forward to hanging them all on the wall. Okay, get cracking, get painting.